Hey guys, I just got one of these cool little uh, Akai MPK Mini keyboards. I wanted to talk about how to make it work with, uh, with Reaper. Once you plug it into your computer, you're going to go to Reaper's System Preferences, click on MIDI Devices, and look to see that the device is here. You want to enable input and input for control messages. You also, on the output side, want to uh, enable output and send output to clocks. Right out of the box, it will work with Reaper. Uh, if you have a MIDI set up with uh, Rhea Synth, uh, that'll work. Uh, if you have Satala set up, that'll work. And you've got two banks of pads to work with. So you've got really uh, 16 pads to choose from. Uh, but the thing that doesn't work are these knobs. Uh, and so I'm going to show you how to set that up. The joystick right of the box uh, goes sideways, and I'd rather have it go up and down. We're going to change that as well. And it uses an internal clock for its arpeggiation. So if you turn on arpeggio, it's going to work with the internal clock. But really, you want it to work with Reaper's clock if you're going to do arpeggio. So we're going to show you how to do that as well. Let's get started. So the first thing you want is to get the MPK Mini Program Editor. And you download that from the MPK Software Manager, which you get from the Akai website. When you go to Akai, it'll take you to Akai Pro. And Akai Pro will take you to your account where you've registered your keyboard. And you're going to go in and look at all of your product registrations and view your downloads. And there's your software manager. You'll download your software manager. And from here, you can download your MPK MIDI editor, which is what lets you make adjustments to how the keyboard is set up. So very briefly, there's a, a few sections here. This one, this one manages your joystick. The middle section is about those pads. Over on the right, you have your uh, knob section. Down below, you have where your arpeggiator clock can be set to come from Reaper. And then at the very bottom, you can select which MIDI channel you're going to use. And then going all the way clockwise, in this section, you can save your changes to the keyboard, send them up. And you can also send and retrieve any one of the eight selectable presets, which is how I recommend you start. Just retrieve program number one. And then up in the file menu, you can save and store those to your hard disk. I'm going to open my preset, Danny MIDI and show you how that's different. So basically, I came in here and I said, let's change the uh, joystick uh, to up down. I didn't touch the pads. Over here in the knob section, I changed these to the names of the tracks that I want to, uh, want to control, vocals and instruments and bass. And I changed them to relative from, uh, from absolute. Also down here, I changed the clock to external, so it gets the clock signal from Reaper. I'm going to send those changes to RAM, and I'm going to save them as a program preset number one. That's all you have to do here. And of course, you want to make sure that you save your program once you've made those changes. So now that I have those changes installed, I can use my knobs. I've got this one to control the, the reverb bus and the mains. Uh, I've got one here for the vocals. You can see the vocal is changing. I've got one for the instruments, overall instrument, uh, the bass and the drums down here. So basically I control you know, the groups of tracks this way. And then if I want to get specific, I can click on a particular track and use this knob to change the volume of the selected track, which is also very nice. So now let's take a look at how we did that. Most of what you're about to see uh, in Reaper is controlled by something called Realearn, which is a Rea pack uh, that you can install. It's free, and you should go to the Realearn uh, GitHub to find out more about it. I'll put the link in the description below. After you've installed Realearn, I went into my click track. So I, I, in my template, I have a click track, which is usually muted, and the effects are turned off, and it doesn't matter. 
So I'm going to come in here and add Reallearn. I'm going to tell it which keyboard we're talking about. And we're going to add a mapping. And we're going to say uh, Learn from the source. And I'll take my first knob and dial it in. And it knows that that's that. And I'll go in here and edit this. And I'll say that I want this to touch. First, I'm going to call this Vocals. Then I'm going to click Learn, and I'm going to touch the volume knob on Vocals right there. So now the two controls are linked, but you can see there's a problem. It's treating it as if it's on off. So we need to change the character of the control in Reallearn so that it treats it as an encoder rather than a range. And now that control is nice and smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and do this for all of the controls I talked about earlier. Now let's take a look at some other cool little MIDI tricks that we can do. And this is going to be with the control channel. We've already seen that the pads control the drums. Now if I turn on the CC button, it's going to send control channel messages back to Reaper. So what I can do now is go into my action menu and show action list and I can look at things like find where my spacebar button is. It's over here. I want to add a new command and I can press that pad and now that will start my transport. It should be clear that anything you can do in your action list can be triggered from pads either using CC or program change. Hey, so hopefully that gave you some ideas about how to use your Akai mini keyboard uh, with Reaper. I certainly learned a lot over the last week, and hopefully you picked up a few tips here too. See you next time.